Can you solve the circled rectangle problem? Hello, I'm Jack Hilton and this is Solutions Explained. A company is designing a logo and the logo is a circle of radius 4 with an inscribed rectangle such that the rectangle is as large as possible. The question is, what is the area of the rectangle? This problem is from a British A-level mathematics exam designed for 18-year-old students applying to university. If you'd like to have a go at the problem, pause the video and give it a try. Make sure to come back to find out the solution. Okay, so let's get started. To begin, we must realise that the radius of the circle is the distance from the centre to any point on the circumference. So we can draw the radius from the centre to the vertex of the rectangle as shown. Now, form a right angle triangle and label the base and height of this triangle as x and y respectively. By Pythagoras' theorem, we can see that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and this is the general equation of any circle of centre 0, 0. In this case, r is equal to 4, and thus r squared is equal to 16, and therefore the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. This equation is satisfied by any point lying on the circumference of the circle, such as the vertices of the rectangle, and this equation is therefore useful in helping to find the area of the rectangle. To find the area of the rectangle, it makes sense that we must first find the length and the width. By our notation, the length will be equal to 2x and the width will be equal to 2y, and therefore the area can be written as 2x multiplied by 2y. If we move things out of the way and simplify a little, we obtain the area as equal to 4 times x times y. Now we have two separate equations which are both functions of x and y. Let's try and eliminate y to obtain the area purely as a function of x. To do this, rearrange the equation of the circle to obtain y as a function of x. Firstly, take away the x squared from both sides of the equation and then take the square root. To obtain y is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared. In index notation, a square root is the same as a half power, so we can instead write y is equal to 16 minus x squared all to the power of a half. This will be useful later on when we need to use calculus. If we tidy this up a little, we can now substitute the equation for y into the area equation to eliminate y. In doing this, we obtain the area is equal to 4x multiplied by the square root of 16 minus x squared. In other words, we now have the area of the rectangle written purely as a function of x. Let's move the circle out of the way for a moment to focus on this equation for the area of our rectangle. We want to find the maximum value of this function. This means we want to find the value of x which gives the maximum value of a. Let's consider four different values of x and plot these on a graph as we go along. If we plug in x is equal to 0.5, we get a value of 7.9 for the area. If we try x is 1.5, we get a value of 22.5 for the area. If we try x is 2.5, we get a value of 31.2 for the area. And finally, if we try x is 3.5, we get a value of 27.1 for the area. Let's join these points up using a curve, and you can see that there is clearly a maximum point around this section of the graph, somewhere between x is 2.5 and x is 3.5. Of course, we could try and read off this x value from the graph, but this is not a very precise way of doing things. Instead, we should use calculus to determine the exact coordinates of the maximum point. All we need to realise is that at the maximum point, the gradient of the function is equal to zero. And therefore, the next step we need to make is to find an equation for the gradient of our function. To do this, we simply need to differentiate our equation. Because our function is actually the product of two separate functions, we need to use the product rule to differentiate our equation. We denote that u is equal to 4x and v is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared. Therefore, du by dx will be equal to 4 and dv by dx will be equal to 1 half multiplied by 16 minus x squared to the power of minus a half, multiplied by minus 2x. If we simplify this, we obtain dv by dx is equal to minus x multiplied by 16 minus x squared to the power of minus a half. We can now substitute all of this into the formula for the product rule to obtain an equation for the gradient dA by dx. 
If we run through the maths and simplify this equation, we obtain that dA by dx is equal to 64 minus 8x squared all over the square root of 16 minus x squared. Recall that at the maximum point, the gradient is equal to zero, and thus dA by dx is equal to zero. Therefore, we can set the gradient function as equal to zero, and then rearrange this to find the value of x which results in the maximum area. Firstly, multiply up by the denominator to obtain 64 minus 8x squared is equal to zero. Take the 8x squared to the other side, and then divide by eight to obtain that eight is equal to x squared. Finally, take the square root to find that x is actually equal to two root two, which is approximately 2.83 and is shown on our graph here on the right. This is the value of x which results in the maximum area. If we now take a look back at the circle and rectangle logo, we can conclude our problem. So we know that x is equal to two root two. Recall that from the equation of the circle, we can write y as equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared. Substituting x is equal to two root two into this equation, and we obtain a surprising result. Y is also equal to two root two, and so the rectangle in our logo is actually a square. This square will have side length four root two, and thus the area of our square will be four root two multiplied by four root two. This gives an area of 32. This is the final answer to our question. 32 is the maximum area of a rectangle inside a circle of radius 4, and the rectangle will actually be a square. Did you manage to solve the problem? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel for more interesting maths and science problems posted every week. Do you want Solutions Explained to solve your problems? Email me at solutionsexplained at gmail.com or contact via Twitter or Instagram, links below. Thanks for watching.